Okay, so let me reconstruct what we had on the, uh, um, on the blackboard, which is uh, the, main, uh, uh, the main theorem that uh, um, starting from, uh, from the thresholding scheme, which is a kind of a practical numerical scheme, and using uh, a minimizing movements interpretation, one can show that uh, under this additional convergence assumption, which uh, um, is a little bit the state of the art in this field, uh, one can show that one converges to uh, uh, um, a solution of mean curvature flow in the, in the sense of Bracke's inequality, but formulated not in terms of very folds, but formulated in terms of BV functions. And that essentially uh, amounted to a localized uh, dissipation inequality where uh, uh, in a time integrated way where uh, for any uh, time t you have that the uh, localized surface energy um, plus uh, the time integrated dissipation, localized dissipation, which uh, um, was of this form. Uh, integrated over the boundary and integrated over time is estimated by the energy of the initial data. And so this holds for uh, all test functions, uh, which here uh, are just depending on space and are smooth on the torus. And of course, they have to be non-negative and for uh, almost every time t. So, uh, 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 so the Bracke is localized energy dissipation inequality holds. Okay, so that's uh, um, that's the uh, uh, that's the game. That's uh, what I want to explain. Um, other questions with respect to the statement? Or other questions? No questions, everything is clear, or you're already still in lunch mode or something. Your question is whether this condition is is similar or has to be. What was your question? Or yeah. 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 This uh, the the analog of this condition. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so, so in, in, uh, in all cases, there is this, uh, there is a, this condition. I mean, if you, if you uh, work with thresholding, there is this condition. If you work with Armgren Taylor Wong, there is the, uh, uh, the condition where you have, uh, uh, I mean, both the, uh, I mean, the parameter on both sides. So we don't know how to. <laughs> But you have to speak up. I'm all half deaf. I know, I know, I know. I'm not really deaf either. So, in the lemma to show us that. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is all. Uh, so, I formulated them for uh, the two phase case, but uh, they all hold for uh, the multi phase case. In particular, also the monotonicity holds in the multi phase case, and what you need is kind of. Uh, Essentially, it's a consequence of the triangle inequality for, so, I mean, try, I mean, you, you, I mean, uh, what, what you, uh, I mean, the, the proof is, uh, uses then, 
so now you have, uh, you have kind of different phases, and for every pair of phases, sigma i, sigma j, you have a surface tension. And the main condition which goes into the monotonicity is uh, next to uh, the obvious symmetry is uh, the, uh, the triangle inequality, which in a certain sense rules out complete wedding. Uh, uh, so uh, ij has to be less than or strictly less than ik plus sigma kj. This type, of, uh, this type of condition enters at a very precise, I mean, the proof is, of course, more complicated, but it's essentially holds. Face, yeah. I think that's more the form of this functional. So uh, one didn't, uh, for that part, one doesn't use much properties of the kernel. So the fact that the kernel is the, comes from the heat equation is the heat kernel didn't play a role in that part. Yeah. So the semi group property didn't play a role. Yeah. No, I don't think so. So I don't think that this has to do with the, uh, that this monotonicity has to do with the, uh, well, okay, so I mean, I'm using, I'm using that the kernel is non-negative. So in that sense, uh, yeah, okay. In that sense, it has to do with the ordering, yeah. More questions, yes. No, no, because uh, so the, the restriction uh, uh, coming there, I mean, uh, there came from the fact that they use kind of uh, regularity theory for almost minimal surfaces, and our proof is, I mean, both, so there was theorem two and theorem th three, uh, I mean, this is very soft, and th theorem two is also fairly soft. We don't use any, uh, any regularity theory, so there's no dimensional restriction. More questions? Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, so that's the uh, uh, that's the statement. And now the uh, uh, remember that the uh, uh, the question was really to uh, relate uh, these three things: uh, um, the um, uh, the uh, bracket uh, inequality. Which, uh, which is there, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the thresholding scheme, uh, which uh, this is a statement on, and uh, Georgie's minimizing movements. Which uh, will now play a role, and particular the, the first lemma, but, uh, um, but for this, uh, uh, we need kind of uh, a new, a different connection to, uh, um, uh, uh, to what I showed you uh, this morning, uh, the, uh, the minimizing movement interpretation of thresholding. We need something, uh, a localized version of that one, where uh, 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 something which holds for every zeta, and that's the next lemma, which now has um, uh, lemma six. So, so that's a localized version of uh, lemma two. So uh, we're given uh, uh, we're uh, we're given uh, such a, a non-negative um, localizing function on the torus. So I could. 
since the torus is compact, I can omit this. Uh, and uh, um, then the statement is uh, uh, the uh, uh, thresholding scheme has uh, the following minimizing movement property. Uh, so uh, it satisfies uh, another uh, kind of uh, minimizing movement property. So uh, uh, chi n uh, minimizes a localized version of the energy plus a localized version of the metric among all u in x, and that was the space of uh, unit interval valued measurable functions on the torus. And now I have to, uh, now there is the tilde, so uh, these two objects now mean something different than before, so I have to uh, uh, give them to you and uh, put this here. So let me start with a simpler object, which is uh, the metric contribution, so that's really uh, what you would expect uh, as the localized version from what we had before. So before we had uh, uh, using the semi-group property and the non-negativity, uh, I mean the semi-group property, uh, we could have, re uh, we rewrote this as uh, gh over two, so the heat kernel at time step h over two convolved with the difference of uh, uh, these two configurations squared and now uh, the only thing I'm doing here, because I don't want to destroy the structure of this term is I put the localizing function there. So this is clearly still uh, a distance function and uh, provided I put the square on both sides. And uh, uh, so that's the uh, um, uh, metric. And uh, uh, now for the energy functional, uh, I guess I need more space, well, it will fit here. Uh, one is tempted to uh, put exactly, to follow this, uh, this same strategy and just localize the, uh, 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 the energy functional we had before, which was this one. But that's not, uh, that's not correct. So you're making, uh, you're making uh, an error here. So there is an additional term. I have to... Uh, Look up the sign, that's with a plus. So uh, there is a term, after lunch it's difficult. So uh, plus uh, u minus chi times the commutator of multiplying with the function zeta and convolving with the heat kernel applied to the function one minus chi. That's not everything, but let's, let's first look at this term. Um, so, uh, so this is, uh, as I said in words, that's the uh, commutator of uh, uh, multiplying with uh, zeta and convolving with gh over two, and it acts on what's coming here. So in general, the notation, I think many of you will be familiar with this. If you have two operators, uh, this here is a, b minus b, a. And clearly, if uh, zeta happened to be a constant function, then this would be equal, th this term wouldn't be there. So, uh, so we would uh, end up with the, uh, with the old functional if zeta were constant. So, uh, so that's the price to pay for smuggling in uh, uh, the localizing function here, but then we also have to uh, pay a price from smuggling in the uh, localizing function here, and uh, that's the second term here which we have to put into the energy because we don't want to destroy this nice uh, norm structure, squared norm structure of the, uh, um, uh, of the metric. So there is uh, another term which is slightly more complicated 
and which has this shape. So, uh, so those are uh, those are the two uh, uh, those are the two terms. Uh, additional terms one gets from uh, from localization. And this one will be important. Ultimately, this term here will be responsible for the transport term, which is kind of the interesting term in Braca's formulation or localization, whereas uh, the last term will never play a role. It's always higher. It will always turn out to be higher order. So higher order or negligible. And, uh, and that, will, uh, that will connect uh, to the uh, transport term. Whereas the first term is, uh, is the one which, if you want, morally speaking, connects to the leading order dissipation because it's just localizing the energy. So, uh, uh, so now it, it looks even stranger. I mean, uh, 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 we, 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 and I missed the square here. Uh, we, we press something in the minimizing movement formulation, uh, but the price we have to pay is now that these things, these objects are even more complicated than before, yeah? So here, so here it's GH and here it's uh, GH over two. Thank you. Okay, so, um, Right, so that's the, uh, uh, that's the statement. And again, I mean, I can show you that this is really a kind of a, a, a simple, um, a simple, essentially algebraic observation that this, uh, that this uh, minimization problem is true. And then uh, provided uh, uh, zeta is strictly positive, uh, uh, also this space is a, co a compact metric space. or fixed positive H so that we can and will eventually use the Georgi's interpolation. Okay, so, uh, uh, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's kind of the localized version of the minimizing movement, trans, uh, minimizing movement scheme that we'll, uh, uh, that we'll need. And it's on this one that we, uh, uh, that we apply to Georgi. So let me, uh, this uh, variation interpolation, so let me uh, kind of, uh, Put this up again, right? And uh, and the way we're going to use the Georgie is uh, so. Perhaps now I can erase this. Um, So we use uh, lemma one in, f in the following form. So uh, it has uh, it has these two um, it has these two parts. Here was uh, uh, the uh, uh, the dissipation. In fact, uh, typically it will be an identity. This dissipation identity into which we plug in the metric slope, and now we plug this in into both expressions. So uh, then it turns into E of U of T uh, plus uh, one half metric slope uh, squared of U of T plus one half times the integral from zero to T um, metric slope squared U of S dS is less than E of chi. That's, uh, that's the form uh, we're going to use it, where you have both, uh, I mean, the metric slope in both places. And the way we're going to use it is now on this, uh, on this minimizing movement scheme. So uh, uh, in our case, this turns into, uh, uh, into, into the following, uh, uh, following identity. So uh, I take now this, energy functional uh, at uh, where I freeze. Ah, okay, so I should in fact, uh, 
as you see, my notation wasn't very good because this energy functional also depends on chi. So it's now kind of a two variable object and that will of course be important. Yeah? Sorry again. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. So here, uh, here we have chi n minus one plus chi n minus one. Thank you. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the structure we had before. Uh, now with a little twist that the energy itself depends on the previous step. Because that's the energy functional here which uh, clearly depends on chi, which here plays the role of the previous step. So, uh, so that's now, in a certain sense, a little bit of departure of, the most, of a more specific minimizing movement scheme. But in a certain sense, we just use it, I mean, we use this variational interpolation and uh, only uh, between two time steps. So we don't care that the energy functional depends on the previous time step. Okay, so let me, uh, let me write this down. So uh, here we, I have to put in the previous time step and here I put uh, the variational interpolation at uh, uh, h time units later, so that will give me chi n. So that's this term plus uh, one half. So here uh, I take the metric uh, uh, slope of the modified energy functional in the active variable with the second variable frozen in at chi n minus one squared at uh, chi n. That's this term. And then uh, I have this integral, one half, the integral from zero to h, um, de uh, h tilde, or let me rather write the integral from n minus one h to n h. And here, I'm looking at the metric slope of the same functional, but now it's uh, evaluated at the variational interpolation. So here I have to use another letter. So I use U H T and uh, D T. And here we have uh, the previous time step E chi N minus one chi N minus one. And uh, where uh, UH of T uh, for T from N minus one H to N H is the variational uh, interpolation of, uh, so the Georgi's variational interpolation of chi n minus one to chi n, that is it solves, it minimizes, or rather I should say uh, UH uh, T minus um, uh, T plus n minus one times h minimizes the functional uh, which uh, comes up there. So it minimizes e tilde h u chi n minus one plus one over two h d tilde h uh, u, uh, no, one over t uh, chi n minus one. Okay. So, uh, so in a certain sense, now we have two uh, we have two types of interpolations. We have uh, uh, the piecewise constant interpolation, which uh, we looked uh, looked already before, for which we have the compactness. So, where here you have the value chi zero, chi one, chi two, chi three, and that's the function chi of h. And now we have the uh, 
um, the variational interpolation, which uh, uh, while well, well, typically will kind of be rather a smooth uh, connection between these things, and that's u of h. But clearly, we expect both to uh, both of them, and we will show that both of them converge to the same limit. Just uh, we need this uh, variational interpolation at this place here, because this allows us to recover that term. Okay, so that's a, that's a kind of completely mechanical application of, uh, of the Georgie. And the only twist is, okay, our energy functional depends on H, it depends on this other configuration, which is the first time step. Uh, the metric also depends on H, but we don't care. I mean, we can just apply it as it is, and, uh, and we get this inequality. And uh, now the idea, of course, is to sum this up. So let me, uh, let me do that in order to contrast it with uh, what we have here. So uh, let me, uh, to make it look the same, let me put the uh, one half here. And let me put uh, a C0 in front of everything which was this uh, constant for which we have gamma convergence of the functionals. And uh, um, now how do I want to, uh, now how do I want to relate this? Uh, and let me call this here capital T. Uh, now how, how do I want to relate this? Uh, so in order to see the uh, kind of how terms come out term by term, um, I have to uh, uh, take care of the fact that um, I have the second argument here. And the way uh, to do this is by sum, summing over n. So I want to write this here as E h tilde chi capital N capital N, that's not quite the term which I have there, plus one half. Let me combine these two terms here uh, in the integral from zero to uh, uh, NH, uh, uh, rather from H to, no, from zero to NH of uh, Uh, the first term, which is chi uh, um, uh, chi h of t uh, at uh, chi h t plus one, uh, sorry, t plus h. That's, uh, that's just this term here uh, brought under the uh, brought under the integral. Uh, there is something wrong in terms of h. Oop, oop, oop. Right, uh, it's already wrong here. Here's a, here's still one t. If you look at, uh, uh, at the lemma, uh, which here is an h. Okay, now it's correct. Um, so there is this, and there is uh, the metric slope uh, still at the same second argument, but now evaluated at the uh, um, metric, uh, at the variational interpolation, and both times it's the squared of the slope, et. So uh, that takes care of these two terms, but now here I made an error, and uh, that's the integral from uh, zero to uh, t, uh, one over h, e h tilde, uh, chi uh, t plus h, uh, comma chi t minus e tilde h chi t chi t. 
Uh, no, actually, I want to write it. Let me look it up because I want to write it slightly differently. T plus H minus T plus H. Okay. Okay, and that's the uh, right. And there is a here, and this is less than e tilde twiddle of chi zero comma chi zero. So that should be uh, that should be uh, um, this uh, this inequality summed up over time steps and bringing this here under the uh, under the integral and using the definition using the definition of the piecewise constant and the piecewise linear interpolation. So uh, so nothing has I mean there's not nothing really analytical has happened at this stage. Um, it's uh, just that, right, so, uh, um, so now uh, one should, s so eventually what we have to show is that it's this term here that gives rise to uh, the transport term and it's uh, this term here, oops, that gives rise to, uh, to the main dissipation term. And of course, uh, uh, this here turns into that. So individually, uh, the goal will be to show, uh, to show this type of convergence uh, where uh, uh, we have, uh, at least here we have an uh, inequality which goes the right way and uh, the other terms um, do converge. So that's the, uh, that's the strategy. So, uh, um, so we write down, uh, we write down this, uh, we take the minimizing movement scheme, which is one scheme, but we write down a different Sorry, we take, out, we take the thresholding scheme, which is a given scheme. We write down a different minimizing movement interpretation, which contains We use Georgie's interpolation on that function zeta to derive a kind of a pre-version uh, uh, of Braque's inequality. And, but then there is a one-to-one -one relationship between Braque's inequality and, uh, and the terms in the Georgie. So that's the... Uh, that's the connection between, uh, between Brache and, uh, and, and the Georgie's minimizing movement treatment. Are there questions besides indices or things which you can't read? Thank you. <laughs> You're saving me. The uh, definition of the E tilde is uh, here. I just forgot the tilde. So, I mean, I, I, I give you, uh, I can give the argument for this. This is again uh, essentially a simple algebraic manipulation as we had before. I mean, the, the E tilde, in a certain sense, is almost designed to do, uh, to provide us with this, uh, uh, with this variant of the minimizing movement interpretation. And, uh, but it turns out that uh, it's exactly the E tilde which, uh, uh, which, gives, uh, uh, which gives kind of both contributions in the, in the, um, uh, in the, in the BRCA definition, in the BRCA inequality. I'm sorry? Yeah. Yeah. 
So, um, so if I if I had kept the original e, I would have gotten the uh, uh, the the simple dissipation inequality with the right with the right constant. I mean, you know, I mean, there is, I mean, that's what I said the first day. You get this uh, when you have a minimizing movement scheme. Uh, you always get this a priori estimate which misses the dissipation inequality by a factor of two, and uh, and it's exactly this uh, uh, this term here which involves the uh, uh, variational interpolation. This tool by De Giorgi that gives the missing factor, the missing term here, and so. Uh, so it would turn into uh, it would turn into kind of the global dissipation inequality, but in a certain sense, uh, uh, you also get this entire family of local dissipation inequalities from uh, the same type of argument, which you uh, which I wouldn't know how to get uh, how to get otherwise, at least not from this BV notion of solution, because that doesn't doesn't even allow you to get the global one. More questions. Um, so what, uh, what do you want to see now? So I can, uh, I can return to, uh, to the proofs of this morning. Uh, I can uh, um, give you now the proof of uh, this, uh, uh, this modified um, uh, minimizing movement lemma. I can continue with writing down uh, uh, the main ingredients into these convergences. So who is for returning to the kind of somewhat simpler Statements of this morning. Nobody, one person. Who is in favor of uh, now seeing the proof of lemma six? Uh, so, so the f I mean, first option. First option is uh, I, I uh, return to uh, um, uh, to this kind of lemmas which I was stating this morning and give some of the proofs of that one. Second, and there was just one person in favor of that, you, and you, you understood it correctly, right, my question. So there was one person in favor of that. The second option is to uh, 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 now prove lemma six. And the third option is to continue with lemmas, I mean with a statement of lemma seven and lemma eight. Okay, the, uh, the senior people don't count. <laughs> uh, that was almost the, almost the same. Um, uh, okay, so since I deferred some of the proofs uh, this morning, let me, uh, let me at least give you the, uh, 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 the argument for that, and then there should be, when do I have to stop? At latest 3.15? Yeah. So uh, uh, I probably will have the time to give you also the statements of uh, lemma uh, six and seven. So now, then, then let me uh, let me tell you why this strange uh, uh, this strange uh, um, variational principle is still true. So uh, uh, so uh, so the thresholding scheme can be looked upon in different under many different angles, and it satisfies many minimizing movement properties, and that's another one. This morning I derived one, and now this is another one which is slightly more involved, but essentially it's the same, um, uh, the same, uh, the same argument. So, um, Proof of lemma. Six. Uh, so we just start uh, with spelling out uh, what this is using these two definitions. So uh, the modified energy functional uh, in some configuration U with some fixed uh, configuration chi, which doesn't have to be uh, an integer. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, a characteristic function, although I use uh, the notation uh, as if it were. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the object we have to look at. 
and now I'm just plugging in the uh, plugging in the definitions and rearrange them slightly. So uh, uh, let me start with the metric term. And uh, there is this prefactor in front of everything. So big bracket. Um, there is zeta uh, g h over two convolved with u minus chi. That's uh, this term, and now I'm taking this term, which as many of you will have, or some of you, if people are still around, uh, will have noticed kind of clearly uh, is related to that one because it has the green, uh, the heat kernel at time h over two at half the time. So, uh, um, so that's the first contribution, so let's keep a little bit uh, of free space here, and then, uh, and then there is this, uh, zeta u g h uh, one minus u plus u minus chi uh, zeta g h convolved uh, one minus chi. And then I have to close this bracket. Okay, so that's just uh, plugging in the definitions. And now, uh, uh, now by definition of the commutator and the semi-group property, this is uh, G, uh, GH convolved uh, for the first part of this commutator minus uh, GH over two convolution with the multiplication operator and then again the convolution operator. And um, so now I claim that these two terms cancel. Uh, why is that the case? Because the second term here, uh, I, so which comes with a minus sign, I can use the symmetry of the convolution operator to build this convolution operator from what comes after it to what comes before it. And if I do this, uh, I'm left with uh, GH over two convolved with U minus chi, big bracket, multiplied with zeta, GH over two convolved with U minus chi. And, uh, and now you see that, uh, that this is exactly, uh, exactly this term. So, uh, so this term drops out and this uh, entire first line gives rise to something which uh, looks a bit simpler, namely uh, zeta u minus chi uh, gh convolved with uh, u minus chi, which is the old metric, which is kind of another way of writing the old metric term multiplying with zeta. Okay, so that's the first term. And now, so that's the first line, what's left over from the first line. And for the second line, uh, we use again the, uh, uh, the definition of the commutator. So this is uh, that here, minus uh, GH uh, zeta one minus chi. And uh, let me see. Uh, I want to, uh, again, on the second term with the minus sign, I want to use the symmetry of the convolution operator. So to write this here as, after integration, as minus um, uh, zeta uh, one minus chi gh uh, convolved with u minus chi. So, uh, uh, so that's this term. So now, now if we collect all terms, uh, and I think I need more space, but now I, I think I can erase the definition because we've used that. So uh, what, we're, what are we left with? Uh, so we have this one over square root of h in front of everything. We have uh, sigma, sigma uh, multi now multiplying all, all remaining terms. 
And the remaining terms are uh, u minus chi, gh, u minus chi, that comes from the metric term. And then we have three terms from the energy, u, gh, one minus u, uh, plus uh, u minus chi, gh, one minus chi, uh, minus, one minus chi uh, gh u minus chi, and then this bracket goes uh, closes. And now we should see that uh, uh, this here simplifies a bit, and uh, uh, so this entire integrand uh, should be equal to uh, minus u um, g h uh, two times g h chi minus one, and then there should be terms uh, which, own, which do not depend on u. So let's see whether this is the case. Uh, so here, uh, in, in this functional, in this term, we have expressions that are quadratic in U, like for this, like for instance, this one and this one, those are the only ones that are quadratic in U, but they cancel because of the minus sign here. So the quadratic terms, uh, so no term, no term uh, that is quadratic in U. That's already correct. Then there are terms which are linear in U, there is u uh, and the convol convolution with, uh, uh, and, and the convolved chi with a minus sign. We have one of them here. There is chi with the convolved u with a minus sign, but that could, should cancel with, uh, uh, with uh, this term here. Uh, we have, uh, well, chi with itself, we're not interested in this. We have u times one which is here, uh, we have u, uh, we have uh, u times one, which, uh, uh, u times one, where does this go? Times one, yeah, right, u times one is, uh, u times one is, uh, is here. Uh, what else do we have? We have, uh, uh, we have this term, but uh, that one I said goes away. Am I getting things correctly here? No, I'm uh, a bit unsure. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay, I mean, uh, Let's check. So we have, uh, we have terms, uh, we have this term here. So now it's not, I can't use the symmetry anymore because I have this cutoff function here. Uh, so we have this term, we have uh, uh, this term, we have this term, we have this term, uh, we have this term, uh, we have this term, we have this, um, This uh, minus u chi uh, plus uh, chi one, which I don't care for, uh, minus uh, plus chi one plus uh, chi chi, and here we have uh, one u minus one u uh, plus uh, one chi uh, plus chi u uh, minus chi chi. Uh, and here what I want is minus two times u chi uh, plus u one. And I seem to have u one, uh, one u one too much. Um, 
concerned about. And I have one now. Uh, one new. Oops, I didn't make this too fast. But, uh, and did I, um, did I copy this term correctly? Yes, I did. Uh, okay, now I'm not, uh, I'm a bit confused because uh, uh, I, I mean, in the break, I tried to boil down kind of the, the multi-phase case in which, uh, uh, in, which, in which situation terms are, in a certain sense, a little bit more symmetric to the single-phase case, and I might have made a mistake there. Uh, uh, if I don't see, don't see um, something here, then perhaps I... Um, it has to wait to tomorrow, till tomorrow, and I have to adjust the uh, adjust perhaps the formula. Um, but presently, I think uh, I think I did copy that correctly. There is the metric term, there is the energy term, and then there are two terms coming from uh, coming from the localization, which in a certain sense are. Um, Where just shuffle, and if the if 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 zeta would not be there, these two terms would cancel. And uh, but um, now it doesn't look immediately that I get this term here. But uh, if if that were true, and now I have to, uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, then we would be in the same situation as in lemma two, that. Uh, uh, this expression here is minimized if u is the characteristic function uh, of the set where uh, this here is positive, uh, which is just thresholding. So if, if this here were true, then uh, 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 now same argument as in uh, lemma two. But, uh, but now I'm a bit confused by the, uh, by the algebra. So it might be that uh, I, 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 I kind of reduced the multi, uh, multi-phase case in a too, little bit too simplistic way here. I have to check that. Okay, so, uh, so let's, uh, let's assume that this, uh, uh, that this here were correct. Uh, then, uh, then we proved lemma six, and uh, now I can tell you uh, about uh, um, about uh, these two ingredients, which essentially are behind these convergences, and um, so let me raise this. So there are two main lemmas. Um, lemma eight, lemma seven. So lemma seven is about the uh, localization on level of um, the um, uh, first variation. So it's it's uh, perhaps. Uh, not too surprising that the metric slope in the end will be related to the first variation. And, uh, and on the level of the first variation, uh, we have that if we look at the modified energy functional, I'm going to write down the definition in a second, which uh, still depends on the second function, and we take uh, the first variation in the first uh, function in direction uh, in some configuration u, in direction of a vector field xi, I remind you of the definition of the first variation in a second, then this is very close to the first variation of the original energy functional, 
which uh, just depends on one argument, uh, but in direction of the localized vector field. And this uh, is nicely estimated by uh, H1 quarter D uh, H U chi over H. So, uh, so let me remind you what, uh, what I mean. So uh, recall the first variation of uh, the functional E in U along Xi. How is this defined? Uh, you're, uh, you're taking, uh, you're modifying uh, your configuration U by solving uh, the transport equation involving uh, the vector field Xi and setting this at the parameter S equal to zero to be your uh, original configuration. So this gives you smooth deformation of, uh, of, your, uh, of your configuration. And if this is a characteristic function, it essentially means flowing, uh, looking at the deformation of the set. So Xi is a vector field. Uh, periodic, as always. And, uh, and then you define uh, the first variation uh, of this functional in the point u in direction of xi to be, uh, well, the first variation of the function. And uh, so, uh, so what are we doing here? We're, we're comparing uh, the first variation of this weird energy functional, which uh, the definition of which I uh, erased, uh, which uh, essentially was this term, and then there were uh, a bunch of correction terms, uh, to the first variation of our original energy functional, the non-localized one. So this one here has the, uh, has the zeta, and the other one doesn't. And uh, uh, let me reconstruct the definition here that was plus uh, u minus xi, zeta, gh, one minus i, plus uh, a third term, which never plays a role. And, um, and so, uh, so the statement, uh, the statement is that uh, um, on the level of the first variation, uh, what I did here uh, really acts like the localization. So kind of looking at the first variation of the localized functional in direction of the vector field Xi is the same thing as looking at the first variation of the unlocalized functional in direction of the localized vector field. So localizing the functional and localizing the vector field commute. That's the, that's the main statement of this estimate. And, uh, and this is a higher order term because by the typical energy estimate, this here should be of order one uh, in an L2 sense in time, and there is still a small h power in front of it. So, uh, so this, uh, this will allow us to uh, kind of relate the first variation of the localized energy functional to the first variation of the unlocalized energy functional. So that's the, um, that's the first uh, ingredient, which uh, will play a role uh, uh, already for this term. And, uh, and then there is a second, uh, a second ingredient. which uh, has a little bit of similar spirit. Uh, but now it's more related to, uh, to the fact that uh, we have this term here, which now kind of uses the fact that there is a second, uh, that there is a second argument here. And uh, so uh, there the statement is, if we look at uh, the, um, uh, 
if we look at this difference, so uh, u chi minus e of u u, h tilde, h tilde. So in the non-localized uh, energy functional, that wouldn't make a difference because the non I mean the, the original energy functional does not depend on the second, second argument. But now there is a dependence and there is a non-trivial dependence in the sense that this gives rise exactly to the first variation of the uh, non-localized metric. In uh, U, in direction of the gradient of zeta. So this expression is nicely estimated. So when I mean this here, I mean only up to constants which depend on higher order norms of uh, zeta and of psi. Here there's only zeta and uh, we get uh, uh, a similar error term, benign error term. We get the square of the same term and uh, and we get uh, a third term uh, which has to do with the energy. No, H, H one half, okay. Plus H one half EH of U. So again, all these terms here will be, will, will be higher order in the end. Uh, this will be of order H one quarter, uh, this also will be, well, this will be then, should be then of order h one half, and this is of order h one half. So these error terms vanish in the limit. And, uh, and here we take the first variation of the, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, unperturbed metric term. Okay? So uh, uh, why is that, uh, Why does that make the connection between these two expressions? Because, uh, so this, let me rather put it here, uh, this makes the connection to, so lemma uh, eight makes the connection to uh, the transport term. In Bracke, why? Because uh, by the Euler-Lagrange equation, of the uh, first of the unlocalized minimizing movement interpretation, of thresholding, so that was lemma two. We have that the first variation, uh, at least if we uh, kind of plug, plug in the, uh, what we're interested in. So uh, if here we take the previous time step and we look at the first variation um, uh, in the actual time step in direction of some vector field, then uh, with a minus sign, this is equal to the first variation of the original energy uh, in the actual configuration in direction of this vector field. So, uh, so also this term here connects to the first variation of uh, the unperturbed energy functional but now we're going to use that for, let me use the same color. We're going to use that uh, by lemma eight. We have to use that not for uh, an arbitrary vector field psi, but for our gradient field. So we're led automatically to look at the first variation of the energy functional in direction of the gradient of the cutoff function. Well, and that exactly gives this term. The first variation gives the curvature, and here's the gradient of the cutoff function. 
So, uh, so the metric term uh, comes in in a very natural, in a very natural way. And now these two uh, um, these two lemmas are a little bit like the lemmas which I you know didn't talk so much about in, uh, this morning or which I didn't give you a proof of this morning. They hold for uh, for general configurations. These are just uh, these are just lemmas for any uh, u and chi, and both of them uh, don't need to be characteristic functions. And any vector field psi. Smooth vector field psi. Okay, so now I think, now I, I, at least I hope you see, I, you, you, start seeing, uh, you start seeing the connection uh, between, um, between this, uh, 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 this uh, localized energy dissipation inequality, which according to Barker uh, uh, characterizes mean curvature flow, and, um, uh, and this uh, uh, localized uh, minimizing movements interpretation of thresholding uh, via, these two, uh, uh, via these two ingredients. So uh, what it's not yet so clear is how, how actually does the metric slope which is a first variation, so a differential, a cotangent vector. How does it relate to uh, uh, the, sorry, how does the first, sorry, I have to say that. How does the first variation of a functional, which is a cotangent vector, if you want, how does the first variation of a functional relate to the metric slope, which is, the, which is a norm of the gradient? So uh, there will be a, a kind of a metric term that converts the functional into, uh, into, uh, into the norm, and uh, uh, this is where we have to kind of maximize or minimize or optimize over these vector field psi, and, uh, and that will give this, uh, in the end, this inequality here. And, but, uh, but ultimately, everything then relies on the fact that uh, not only um, the, um, uh, the energy functionals converge by assumption, uh, in the local, even in the localized setting, but also that the first variations converge. And that's something classical in, uh, uh, in, uh, um, uh, in kind of this type of uh, asymptotic limits of, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of sharp end interface uh, models and goes, I mean, I know it as kind of the trick of Reshetniak and I know it from the paper of uh, uh, Lukhaus and uh, uh, Modica that uh, if you make this convergence assumption on the, uh, uh, on the interfacial energy, then also automatically kind of the first variation converges. So the convergence of the first variation will be something that, uh, um, uh, that we'll get essentially from our assumption. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the, uh, that's the uh, kind of the strategy. So next time, uh, uh, well, so I can give you, I mean, first of all, I have to see uh, whether I missed, uh, missed something or just didn't see the right algebra on the blackboard or whether I need to modify a little bit the definition because I boiled it down in, an, in a naive way. Uh, and then uh, if you want, uh, I can give you uh, uh, kind of more details, uh, details of the proofs. And I guess uh, I stop here, then there's even uh, nominally time for three minutes time for questions or so.